Um, firstly, again, uh, let me thank the organizers, especially Professor Darshan Shankar, for inviting me here. Uh, as uh, uh, I was introduced, I'm an odd person out here. I'm a technologist with a specific focus on nanotechnology, but a lot of interest in healthcare, right? Uh, but even before this, you know, pre-COVID, uh, we were conducting a lot of workshops for clinicians in our institute, in nanotechnology center, in collaboration with Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. And one of the clinicians group was specifically in Ayurveda, right? So while we had a clinicians group in, uh, you know, allopathy, there was also a clinician group in Ayurveda to tell them what are the possibilities of nanotechnology for healthcare. But I wish we had a group which had both allopaths, Ayurvedic doctors together. You know, that is what we mean by nurturing interdisciplinarity for future, right? This multi-system dialogue is extremely important. So in this context, uh, I will just spend some time to tell you, I mean, all of you are aware of this already, there is convergence in healthcare, convergence of all kinds from technological perspective, but also convergence of all disciplines, right? You know, multiple disciplines of clinical care coming together, right? This is what is happening. On the other side, it was already mentioned a couple of times, the focus is on swasthya. Thanks to COVID, perhaps, the emphasis is going from, you know, hospital-centric care to treat diseases to home care to make sure that everybody is well and they're not going into this trajectory of disease, right? So that is also a very interesting shift that is happening in healthcare all around the world. Now, with all that happening, if you look at how are we doing in providing healthcare to masses, there is a stark healthcare divide that we see. At the top, we have elite few, maybe, you know, a billion people in the world who have access to best healthcare, but there is a large majority, you know, which is not having even the basic healthcare, right? This is where I believe Ayurveda will also play a very, very important role. And, you know, what is enunciated by World Health Organization, three A's, availability and accessibility, and more importantly, affordability becomes extremely important in this context, right? So we are trying to address this, uh, you know, because IIC has had uh, more than 100 years of uh, legacy in uh, research in science and engineering, right? That was our focus. Now, we are embarking on, a, you know, new frontier, if you will, is to bring clinical sciences along with basic sciences and engineering technology, which is already out there, right? The idea is really to come up with deep science and technology based discoveries and innovation and thereby create affordable healthcare to all. And only then I think we will be able to uh, meet our PM's health vision that, you know, healthy citizen is, a, you know, is something that we really want uh, going forward in this country, right? So uh, our emphasis is really to focus on clinical research and medical technologies. And in this endeavor, we would like to partner with all kinds of stakeholders. You know, this is a very, very diverse uh, community that we have, right? Okay, so what are we planning to do? We are planning to set up, uh, you know, 832 bed hospital with emphasis on postgraduate and PhD training. MD PhD program is going to be the fulcrum of this initiative. And of course, this will have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, advanced technologies and all that, but that uh, let me skip. This is how it will come up. But I want to spend a few minutes on this. You know, in our country, we have excellent institutes, but they're all siloed. We have IITs, which are only looking at technology. We have AIMS, which only looks at medical sciences. We have ICERs, which only look at, you know, basic sciences. Really, the time has come to move beyond that known position, right? Uh, so what we, this is very common, uh, you know, uh, in other countries in the West. What we plan to have is really admit students who already have their basic uh, medical degree, MBBS degree, could also be BAMS degree. We have been talking to Dr. Darshan Shankar how we can have a MD, PhD program for Ayurveda also. But the idea is that they come in and they start spending time in clinics as well as in labs, both science and engineering labs. They sort of go back and forth, right? And they will work on MD thesis as well as PhD, spending equal time in clinic as well as the lab, right? That is the idea that we have, right? And this is a new idea and, you know, 
there will always be a lot of hurdles, but we want to certainly overcome all those hurdles and they will get both MD and PhD degree coterminous at the end of this journey by submitting a single thesis, right. That is the, uh, the vision that we have and we are working towards that. And I think in terms of the possibilities, we will be only limited by our imagination, right. In the context of this audience, I want to emphasize that we will have a center for integrative medicine, right. We really want to look at uh, traditional systems of knowledge, especially Ayurveda and perhaps, you know, with whatever we can do, provide scientific underpinning for some of these uh, activities. And this will be extremely important in all the non-communicable diseases. You know, as you know, the healthcare burden has actually shifted from infectious diseases to non-communicable diseases today, right. So, we also want to focus on that and in addition, of course, uh, infectious diseases will certainly be there and uh, we would also look at that. Considering our strength in technology and computer science and so on and so forth, this will also something that will be central piece of our initiative, right. I mean, this is, you know, as uh, Dr. Gurmit, we have also been talking to Gur Dr. Gurmit and, you know, there is a lot of collaboration that is already going on. You know, this genotype and phenotype personalized medicine, you know, in Ayurveda is, is very well known, but in the, the so called modern sciences, it is sort of, you know, coming up now that, you know, because of genotype and also phenotype, you may also have to think about personalized medicine. The same one size does not fit all, perhaps you may want to do a customization. And there again, you know, some of these technologies that we have will uh, be extremely important going forward, right. So, we also want to place equal emphasis on this, right. So, I want to end this talk uh, by, you know, again spending uh, this time on this importance of multi-system dialogue, right. This is not going to be easy. This is going to be extremely hard. Uh, uh, Secretary Dr. Kotesha ji in his talk mentioned uh, the goal to have Nobel Prize. In fact, that is possible. I, in my opinion, there is a case in point, uh, you know, this Artemisian, which essentially came out from Chinese traditional medicine, right. Uh, the pharmacologist in China to Yo-Yo got the medical, uh, I mean, the Nobel Prize in medicine for this discovery. But what I want to mention here is that how hard it is to really sort of go on this vector. This is Professor Padmanabhan, some of you may uh, know him, he was former director of IASC, himself a great scientist, biochemist. He has done a lot of work on curcumin, right, uh, haldi, right. And this, I mean, his one piece of work was that when you actually give this curcumin as a adjuvant along with art or artemisian, which is now a standard practice in treating malaria, it has a lot of very interesting, you know, repercussions, right. There are a lot of work that he has done with animal models. But even for a person like Professor Padmanabhan, it was very difficult to really go through all the clinical trials and bring it into practice. In one of the interview when this question was asked, he says this has been going on for more many years. The problem is that there is confusion as to how to treat a natural molecule like curcumin, which does not satisfy the classical parameters of medicinal chemistry, right, as a drug. So, its mechanism of action is different, this is very important, right, and it acts through creating an immune memory, right, to fight against the parasite long after it has disappeared. I and mean, now everybody is talking about T cells, immune memory because of the COVID, right. You see, this is what he was saying, the mechanism is completely different. And he goes on to say that the aim is to prove our hypothesis that through curcumin does not kill the malaria, though it does not kill. It generates memory against those antigens, right, by producing antibodies or working in combination with T cell memory, right. So, this is the kind of, uh, you know, scientific underpinning that one can really think about by bringing, you know, diverse people, right, Ayurveda biology along with nanotechnology and, you know, molecular biology and so on and so forth, right. We sincerely hope that, you know, this is the kind of thing that we want to achieve in the next few decades to come, right. So, with that, uh, thank you for your attention.